Our Secretary of State, Mac Warner. Secretary Warner, thanks for joining us today. Well, well, thank you for having me. And speaking of culture, I'm down here at the Cultural Center in uh, Charleston with uh, over 200 of uh, West Virginia's best and brightest. They're the Golden Horseshoe recipients, and they're about to knight them uh, members of the Golden Horseshoe. So it's kind of an exciting day. Uh, I was going to mention, I heard you've already done a photo op this morning. (laughs) <laughs> that's going on as we speak. Good. Well, we, we're, we're talking about uh, revolutions, whether real or contrived, but I, I know that uh, you haven't had a revolution, but uh, your office has certainly celebrated, and, and you as well, uh, the first 100 days and some of your uh, accomplishments. Uh, speak to us about uh, how proud you are of what your staff has been able to accomplish. Well, I couldn't be more proud of the uh, the staff and what we're uh, engaged in. I've got just some tremendous people around me, a great team that we put together, and there are just a number of issues that we're uh, taking on. And it's fun to come to work when you've got good people, good things to do, and the, the tools to do it with. And that's mm-hmm. what we're we've done in these first hundred days. Uh, we're getting after the voter registration lists and cleaning those up, uh, and getting people enrolled on the lists at the same time. Yeah. Uh, over a thousand people registered since we've uh, over 10,000 have registered since we've been in office and about a thousand of those are students uh so we're pretty proud and, of yeah the, uh, and 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 also we're headed okay. and of course that uh, that was with great help uh, working with the uh, uh, the clerks in each of our 55 counties the the cleaning up of the registration rolls it, it, it really is the clerks that are doing this work uh-huh. uh, as you know they're, they're responsible for the uh they're the chief election officer it's in each of the counties And they've been wanting to do this, and that's what they told me when we were doing the campaigning. So now that I'm in office, we've implemented a number of ways to improve our relationships with the clerks. Uh, We've got some field representatives out in the fields of various areas of the state to work with them on a regular basis. Weekly phone calls or biweekly phone calls where they we we have as many as 30 or 40 clerks or their registering uh, specialists in their office. Uh, assistant clerks who will get on the phone and they all talk together about common problems, com- common issues as to how to clean these voter rolls up. Mm-hmm. And so then we identify the, some of these uh, potential duplicates or perhaps people who are dead or convicted felons. We've, get, we've taken over, off over 1,100 convicted felons off the list. Mm-hmm. And so we're simply providing the clerks the tools to do their jobs, and they've been wanting to do that all along. Right. And that's why you see so much movement here early on. Right. A lot of people know, some may not, that you want to start a new business in West Virginia, which everyone hopes we'll see more of in coming years. You have to go through the Secretary of State's office, and you've got good numbers there, including uh, new businesses that are veteran-owned, which I know is near and dear to your heart. Absolutely. Uh, being a veteran, uh, there's not, I mean, we, anything that we can do for the veterans, uh, we're going to do, and uh, it's just been a, we uh, started, I think, 27 veteran-owned businesses. Yeah, I think that's the number the I got. Hundred days, right? Yeah, and and over 4,000 new businesses in total. So right. we're just working across the board, streamlining things. We've got a one-stop shop that we're working on. To, it, it's a concept that's been talked about for for really 15 years or so, and we're going to make that happen this year and uh, just make it easier for people to come to one location uh, to deal with both the Secretary of State's office to do the registration, the tax office, workforce, labor departments all in one location. So that's going to happen here in uh, Charleston. There in Clarksburg, we're going to bring our offices closer to the tax department. I was going to go there. Uh, let's let's talk about Fairmont moving to Clarksburg, yeah. Yeah. Well, we've had an, uh, an office in Fairmont, and uh, it, it's, it's been a nice office. It's in a great location. But um, the, the people have complained about having to go to Fairmont to deal with the Secretary of State's office and go down to Clarksburg to deal with the tax office. And in the scheme of things, the tax office is in more, uh, they've got security concerns and other issues that that say in the scheme of things, it's easier to move the state department or the Secretary of State's office to to the tax department rather than trying to make them come to us. Mm -hmm. So for the customer relationships, the the business community, the ease of the community in getting their businesses registered with both uh, state government offices, we're going to move our office down there next to where the well, it, it's in the same location as the auditor's office right near right. two hundred West Main Street. Right. They've moved down and, to the state building, but they still have to occupy some space in that building where they were, which is now where you'll all, all also take over office space. Correct. So yeah. it's going to be much more convenient for people to go to one location, be able to park their car, deal with both agencies, and uh, that's why we're making the move. Plus, 
it's uh, considerably cheaper in that location. And what we're going to actually be able to do is open up two offices for the Secretary of State, one out in the Eastern Panhandle, and do this at less expense than just the office oh, okay. in Fairmont. Right. So there are both economic and ease of uh, business reasons why we're making that move to Clarksburg. Yeah. And, and being familiar with where the auditor's office was and where the new state building is, it's very walkable. So it is going to be a simple process for anybody that needs to go through that to start a new business. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's. Um, how how much of uh, the process of starting a new business, Secretary Warner, can be done online now? Well, it, 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 pretty much from the state, from Secretary of State's office, uh, pretty much all of it can be done. Okay. In fact, we're moving in that direction. We yeah. want businesses not only to register online, but also renew do the renewals. And in that regard, we have some news from the uh, this legislative session. The legislature helped us and passed a bill where we're going to be able to allow businesses to register for up to five years at a time so they wouldn't have to come back every year and, and do the renewal. So that's okay. in process. That will take place this summer. And uh, so look forward to that. Uh, okay. we've had to, we're, we're, our motto is moving at the speed of business. And, and this is what business owners have asked us. And we, we worked with the legislature, got that done. And uh, we're just trying to be responsive because in this day and age, we have to be competitive both mm-hmm. internationally and across state lines. And so we don't want a business to get frustrated and trying to open up a business in West Virginia and say, well, we're just going to go across the border to Ohio or Pennsylvania. We right. want those jobs here. We want that tax base here. So I'm going to make it as easy as possible to register a business here in West Virginia. And you were actually uh, up our way in Fairmont celebrating some small businesses earlier this week. <laughs> Absolutely. I've been up there several times, one for the Small Business Association uh, Awards presentations. What a wonderful uh, afternoon that was, uh, a luncheon there at the High Tech Consortium Foundation, and uh, recognized some, just some great businesses. It was inspiring to, to see you know, the, the young, uh, the, the people, the, the women-owned, uh, all, all the different categories that were recognized. Right, right yeah. And uh, so that, that's just a, a wonderful uh, event. And then I was back up there at the end of a day or so ago at the uh, at Harrison County to talk with Susan Thomas, the, the county clerk. Oh, okay. Wonderful job she's doing. Right. Cleaned up a lot of names there in uh, Harrison County. And then mm-hmm. over to Annette Wright with the city clerk uh, to talk with her. We've got a municipal elections coming up. And if I might, just You're doing some training for that, aren't you? What's that? You're going to be doing some training for the municipal elections, correct? W- we are, and that's the yeah. plug I wanted to put in on okay. May 12th. We plan to use that auditor's office that we're moving into, moving okay. our office into. We're going to use that as a training center. So any municipal uh, clerks or people that are involved in elections that want to come and be trained, I know we've got some new municipal clerks. We had 13 new county clerks that were elected offices last okay. time. So uh, yeah, everybody's always looking for training and hearing what the latest process is to, to run up elections. So on May 12th at that facility in Clarksburg, we will be holding municipal training for the upcoming elections. I know there are quite a few municipalities having elections on both June 6th and then June 13th. Right. Well, and we so, reach, uh, yeah, with our show, we reach out to about 14, 15 counties, so maybe there's some out there right. listening that will now know how simple it could be. So if they want that training, just contact sure. the Municipal League, and uh, okay. please, we welcome you to that training. It's a wonderful training facility, and we're looking forward to putting to use to train uh, municipal clerks. We're talking with our new Secretary of State, Mac Warner, uh, uh, joining us uh, this morning from from Charleston. Uh, I, I hope I'm not throwing you a curveball. I, I got a note from your office uh, uh, about a reminder for young people. I think it's 9th through 11th graders about the Governor's School of Entrepreneurship. Are you familiar with that? Well, I've heard of it. I, I don't have any particulars on that at the moment. <laughs> it, it came uh, through your... No, I, and I understand. Advice, I, please uh, share with your Well, we've ne- they, can, they can go online and, and look that one up, but I know that uh, they've extended a registration date, and it's a, uh, a program for uh, 9th through 11th graders, I believe it is, and it's a three-week program, and it's all paid for, and I guess they're looking for a few more people to sign up. Let's go on then, uh, since we started down the road of uh, our young students, and talk about um, the Honorary Secretary of State's program, and we actually have had uh, one of the young ladies on our program a couple of months ago. Uh, yes, uh, they're from Liberty High School. Yes, Definitely right, Winters. yeah, good. She was one of our early uh, honorary secretaries of state. And where, where, that, where that comes from is, as we talked earlier about engaging the young people, getting them to register to vote, uh, this Inspire program, Inspire West Virginia, is oriented towards peers encouraging their peers to register to vote. And so these students throughout the state at their various high schools have 
join the Inspire program, and there's actually a summer camp that uh, they go and they learn the process uh, for registering people. But uh, 15 schools throughout the state have engaged to the point where they've gotten 100 percent of all eligible voters at the high school to register to vote. And so these, those become Jennings Randolph uh, schools. And the reason for that is Jennings Randolph was the West Virginia senator who was responsible for the 26th Amendment being passed. The 26th Amendment allowed 18, 19, and 20-year-olds to vote. This was back in 1971, mm-hmm. and we just celebrated the 45th anniversary of that. And there were some key West Virginia players that were involved in that, in addition to Jennings Randolph. Uh, the first person to register to vote was Ella Mae Haddix from uh, Tigers Valley High School. She's a teacher there now, but she was in Elkins, and Senator Randolph took her. To, she was the first one to register in the United States, so that's a West Virginia citizen. We always continue to uh, cite Sarah Blair, who was the youngest person ever elected. Right, from the Eastern Panhandle. Yeah, yeah. That's right, and she's yeah. from West Virginia. Sure. And she has inspired a whole delegation of people to, to run for the House of Delegates in the West Virginia Senate, and there's a millennial group here, eight, eight people under the age of 30 that have been elected to office, uh, and many of them cite her winning that election as the reason that they've gotten involved. So yeah. we really are in, engaging the young people to register to vote, mm-hmm. to yeah. vote and then to actually run we, for office. And we had, I know you know Ben Queen, and we had him on, on our show as well and uh, is learning a lot. And he did a great jo- job on our program. Uh, mentioned so far it's been a lot of just listening and uh, paying attention, but he did, a, he did a good job, and I know he's very focused down there. And, and I see those millennials hanging out together, yeah, yeah. And, and they're making a difference down here in the legislature as we wrestle with these tough and, budget issues and so forth. What, so what, back to the honorary secretary of state, when these students get 100% of their classmates to register to vote, then they are eligible to become an honorary secretary of state. And we bring them down for the day. They shadow me. Uh, they go and do the, the, do the things that I do throughout the day, and we honor them by recognize, recognizing them in the House or the Senate chambers. And uh, it just gives them an insight as to government and what a Secretary of State does. Mm-hmm. So it's been a wonderful program. Mm-hmm. It's just fun to mix it up with the youth, see their enthusiasm, and get, get their ideas. I'll tell you, we sat down with a group of them, and they showed us not errors, but problems with the registration card, how it, sometimes it's confusing and how it could be rearranged. And they learn that by sitting down with their peers. Mm-hmm. And the peers said, well, what does this mean? How, what do I need to, mm-hmm. to check this block or, or fill out this block properly? So we're going to actually change our registration forms in concert with the county clerks, have their input, and this is coming out of this uh, interaction with the young people. So and, and, and I, one can't, of, you're good. I, I can't say enough to right. encourage the young people to, to get involved civically in the election process, and uh, we're listening to you. Well, and, and we're out of time, but one of the other things I wanted to note that's uh, resulting from the work that these students are doing is, is we're not just registering students. We're registering their parents and neighbors and, and other school workers, teachers, cooks, custodians. Yes, when they go to register, anybody's welcome to come up. And yeah. Like you said, the custodians, the cooks, everybody at the school is able to come up and register. So it's just a wonderful program. Secretary Warner, thank you for joining us this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you, Gary, for having me. Absolutely. It was a pleasure.